Hey guys, hope you are well. Thanks for checking out another ECL. So first and foremost, me and Brenda are in the same room, which doesn't Makes happen very often, does it? You this know. is not StreamYard. There isn't a line down the middle. Yeah. This is the most realistic filter you will ever see. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> you know but like I say we, we're doing a Q&A for you guys today um, I deliberately got Brendan together we were gonna catch up today but we want to make sure we've got something special yeah um, speci specifically for you guys and we've got some great questions off the back of it so but before we jump in Brendan what we've been up to you mate what's, what's been happening to be honest it's been I'm a bit, a bit frustrated with my own exercise at the moment it's um what's been happening a, a bit a bit up and down like kids have had bugs and this and that mm. so I've ended up sort of crowbarring in sessions on the weekend but then train on a weekend and then like Monday and Tuesday you're a bit low mm. and then you, you, I'm just finding it hard to find the rhythm at the moment yeah. so yeah maybe maybe you guys need to give me a bit of coaching yeah <laughs> throw some suggestions <laughs> at me definitely well, I, I'm exactly the same I've got that bug you know coming over that and I think it's because you know it's going to be hard for me anyway mm. I know it's going to be hard getting back to it and you guys have probably had the same situation but what I've done is concept two, do the yeah. 200k challenge holiday challenge so you can use a ski erg bike mm. erg mm. or the rower mm. it's 200k over the month right. so it's, yeah, yeah, it's a meaty yeah. challenge yeah. but for me I was like no let's sign up mm. to it let's commit I've got a few guys in the gym got that competitive streak going and you know as soon as you get into it yeah so yeah that's going to be my con fitness. concept two is a great piece of kit in oh. general like i've got one in my garage yeah and actually that was one of the sessions that i did this weekend was literally just do a, a, a few bits of calisthenics pull-ups mm. and stuff but it's a 4k row and i always try and hit under four minute k's mm. so 16 minutes yeah, yeah. And you always start off and you're like, it's easy. Yeah. You know, just pulling it for fun. And very, very quickly it becomes challenging. Yeah. And um and so yeah, give that a try, that just just solid like four K. You're yeah. not rowing that fast. You're rowing steadily. Yeah, yeah. But it does take some strength. It's just it's a really, really good piece of kit, isn't it? It yeah. just combines everything. Strength, endurance, timing. Yeah, absolutely yeah and i mean i'm a big fan of the ski erg like we said last week um and that's fantastic yeah. so i'll be mixing yeah it's the, it's really good i'll be mixing the two but i think if you can learn anything from concept two as a brand and this is a great business lesson if you want to look at how great people do it have a look at concept two mm. as a brand because they stay true to the values over lockdown when price of kit went silly money they didn't budge mm. and kept it consistent mm. they keep the prices low they built a really really good community and the yeah. thriving they are the go-to people for yeah. a roller yeah. you either yeah. look at it and go is it a concept two if mm. it's not a concept two you you almost take a mm. step back and go so I think if you're building a business and if you want to look at a case study within yeah. the equipment yeah. industry I think look at what they do well and also the product mm. that underpins the brand is excellent yeah like they have developed it there's yeah the mark one now i think they're mm. on like mark five or something like that but they have developed that product but it's, it's, it's excellent yeah it's robust it's simple and efficient mm. and then they've underpinned that with community yeah, so yeah. people want to beat their times and want to tell people about it yeah so you know there's some real rocks in their brand that is clearly the case for coaching and mm. i always say you can't out market a bad product yeah and the best way to market your product is through the product itself yeah get the exp the, the excellent results get the mm. transformational results mm. and your confidence to sell and market yourself comes from your product mm. the service that you can deliver and the result that you can deliver so ultimately you know concept to a good good little uh, you know example aren't they yeah yeah and even simple things like the customer service you've got a question about the product oh it's broken oh we'll sort it out you know definitely definitely check those guys out in terms of just how they do things if you want to be the best look at what the best do and look at them and just take the big lessons from them yeah you know we're not saying go and make a roll by the way just <laughs> look at the business model and you'll take a lot from it so yeah i'm looking forward to getting stuck into that and, and that'll force me to stay consistent because i think you 
you have to average around about seven or eight kilometers per day. Right, okay. So that's legit then, isn't it? It's, it's going to be tough. It's yeah. going to be tough. There's going to be a few where I'm just going to split down meters up. Right. So I'll split it up and I'll do two high intensity days in their shorter workouts, yeah. really hammer it. Yeah. So I'm going to do two a week of kind of high intensity split that. Mm. And then the rest of it is just going to be steady state. Yeah. Yeah. Really build the base, and then I'll just do two week, two sessions a week of lifting. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to go into um, my explosive squat work yeah. and uh, lots of prone rows and stuff. Yeah. Pretty much yeah. just training like a rower, to yeah, be honest, yeah, for the sure. full month and yeah. support yeah. that yeah. and look after the management and stuff like that as well. So yeah, very good. Let's see what happens. Yeah, have to report bit. back. Yeah, on your findings. Defo. Well, I looked at the world, indoor world championships and the guy who won it was a Russian standing, yeah. but he was just an upside down triangle. So you're yeah. like, the yeah. guy's in shape. Yeah, if I can look have, like him, look Russian by happy. the end of it, I'll be happy. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what though, doing doing rowing, rowing for a few k, and then trying to do pull ups after was impossible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it sounds like what the hell are you talking about of course it's it's hard but it, it, it shocked me how mm. challenging that was and how much you're using your your pulling muscles yeah and actually there's a, there's an argument so it's probably doing that too much yeah as opposed to using the lower body mm. to drive the the the, the rowing yeah. uh, effort but um really is like you know when you do a pull-up and you sort of like i am a dead weight yeah yeah, I, yeah. it's like a two rep max i was doing <laughs> like jesus i need to need to do some work here yeah yeah it's either that or you you make makes you realize pull-ups like yeah i need to lose a little bit of weight yeah. here you yeah, know? yeah 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 pull-ups after christmas are the worst thing in the world because it just gives you a constant reminder of i've overindulged yeah. here yeah. Yeah. you know absolutely yeah no exactly <laughs> anyway anyway so that's a bit about our training stuff so we had a couple of questions um i put it out to people in the elite coach uh, network people on the mentorship and um, yeah, just put a few questions out there. And one of them was from Bella, who is, she's just taken on a new client and she's gonna be working outside of the gym. So first and foremost, she was like, okay, it's very easy to fall into the trap of lots of just running, mm. shuttles, mm. conditioning, lightweight, stuff that just makes you tired. And she was concerned that she wasn't gonna get the overload. But I was sort of explaining and, and looking at it and saying, well, I actually spent a full season training a rugby team, pitch side, mm -hmm. no access yeah. to a gym. And I know yeah. you've been in a similar situation. So we're going to dig into that now, yeah. guys, of kind of body weight, body weight training. And mm -hmm. is it just as body weight squats, lunges, and that's it. And as soon as you get to a certain proficient in them, you can't do anything else, which really isn't the case, is it? No. Do you know? So yeah, it, it's, I always say that as an S&C coach, you're only limited by your creativity. And a good S&C coach can deliver a program in the most well-kitted out environment mm. or the least kitted out environment. And you're only limited to your creativity, to how you get the adaptation that you seek. And that's a key thing here. What is the adaptation that you're looking to get from your mm. program? Because a lot of the time when you you do outside training, you do body weight training, or or you haven't got any kit, the, the switch flips to like, right, it's got to be metabolics, it's mm. got to be sprints, it's got to be conditioning work, but it doesn't. And this is the point, you know, you did a full season with, with no kit, working to get a series of adaptations from endurance mm. to mobility to it, to strength, to power. So you absolutely can. I, I've done dry land training with swimmers on the pool side, yeah, yeah. And, and only ever had themselves to work mm. with. Um, done the rugby stuff as well, the mixed martial arts stuff for years in our gyms. We didn't mm. have any equipment at all apart from bodies to work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. And that's his. One of my videos, the body weight solution, takes through every single aspect of, of body weight training. It's a pretty robust resource. Mm. Excuse the pun. And. Um, um, and for me, I think the first question to ask is, what is the adaptation you're actually looking to get here from your program? That's indoors, outdoors, whatever kit you've got, frankly. But then I think, I think you've got loads and loads of stuff that you can do. And a few of the things you can do straight away, I think, think about manipulating the tempo of the exercise. So instead of doing a squat with um, you know, one down, one up, you can do it with eccentrics, you can do it with um, isometrics at the bottom, 
and you can do partner stuff mm -hmm. as well so you can add resistance that way and then you can go unilateral um, so single leg squats is a challenge for everybody generally mm. speaking and going back to single leg and unilateral work uh, and upper body stuff as well but single leg work for a phase for four or five weeks six weeks whatever it may be is an absolute guaranteed way to get people stronger mm. off the back of it yeah. so it's you got to look at these things as an opportunity really haven't you I think yeah and I think that was the biggest thing for me when looked when I was working with the rugby team it was almost like actually I, I have to go back to doing the fundamentals it's quite easy to bypass it if you've got yeah. access to reams of bars and racks and stuff like that and actually player availability went up and actually I created better athletes mm. by taking away some of the you know kit and all yeah. of that and it was yeah. actually I made them more robust and made them more athletic by just going back to the, mm. the fundamentals mm. realistically mm. so the single leg work the balance work the jumps mm. the holds yeah. being explosive with body weight yeah and ultimately we had massive success because player availability we had guys coming up to me and were saying actually I thought I was done at the end of this season but mm. I haven't missed a game I'd normally yeah. my ankles would be going or I'd have a back injury and actually by implementing a program that wasn't relying on kit, I actually got better athletes and better results. Mm. It wasn't just chasing load on the bar or speed yeah. with the bar yeah. and stuff, which we're all guilty of. I'm sure there'll be people mm. watching this video and went, it's easy just to cha chase weight, isn't it, on yeah. the bar, yeah. where actually you take that away and now you start to think about mm. What I'm, what have I got? Mm. To, what am I actually got to trying to do here? Do you mm. know? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look at the movement and and that question about what adaptation you you're seeking. The key question is the answer to that. If you say strength, mm. you want to challenge yourself to say, well, that's okay, but we can get stronger without just jumping into squat barbell squats and press ups, or, uh, barbell bench press and stuff like that. You know you've got to challenge yourself on the answer to that question mm -hmm. as well as the question itself yeah and um and when you when you talk about body weight training you know if you look at somebody who does single leg press ups sorry single leg single arm press ups you know with with slow tempos mm -hmm. eccentrics like they are ridiculously strong yeah they're handling an unbelievable amount of body weight yeah, combined yeah. with balance and stability mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff so you know we want that in our in our yeah. players, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think the, the phases I've done of outdoor type of training and, and limited equipment training, the one thing I would say is that people enjoy it because mm. it is varied, it is different, and especially when you start doing some competing in there, yeah, you, yeah. you know, everything's still measurable. You can get your tape measure out and measure yeah. the broad jumps, measure all the different pieces, mm. med ball throws or whatever you've got. Um, you know, th there's there's some real, real engagement you can get mm. in those sessions, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. And I think your programs can still be really objective. You can still get lots of baseline measures. You can still get power outputs. Yeah. You can still yep. get uh, time-based stuff and everything yeah. else like that. You've got to stop watching a tape measure. You've got a power program there. Yeah, you? exactly that. And I think that's what was great. And I think you're looking at different ways of building strength. You start looking at right isometric strength, eccentrics, um, and then obviously the, the rate and the speed of movement. You know, you try and get a 110 kilo prop to do six body weight squats, asked to either a picnic bench or just getting it asked down to a rugby ball, and say, right, I want you to do a rep a second. Mm. See how fast mm. they, they actually move, and they, they can't actually handle that. Sure, and it's it, and that's a great form of yeah, training. So right, it's six reps in six yeah, seconds. Yeah. When you do a rep a second, mm. but what are you building there? Mm. You're building some really good explosive strength, and having to move yeah. and control and slow themselves down, then go again, slow themselves mm. down. So really, really good way. So yeah, tape tape measure and a, a stopwatch, the way you go. But so come on, then, Steve. What what are your? I don't know. Let's go top three movements exercises whatever you want to call them with no equipment mm. that would be in probably 80 percent of your programs then so i think i think for me is if you've got access to a partner so say if you're working with a team i'm a big fan of drags yeah so partner drags 
get your mate to become a dead weight, mm. hook your arms under their arms and just drag them, you mm. know, mm. across the Yeah, across it's really the pitch, tough, that. Up to the 22, or up to yeah, the 10. Like a reverse sled yeah, drag, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, but what you're doing there, you're building really good eccentric strength through the hamstrings, you're building that good load, you're building good tolerance, but it's actually really fun because the partner being dragged wants to make themselves as heavy as they possibly can for yeah. their mate. Yeah. And then the pay person who's dragging them is like, I'm not getting beat by you. Yeah, so yeah, I think yeah, if yeah. you've got access to a partner, that's a fantastic one. And I think if you haven't got access to a partner, I always go back to sh the short sprints get your athletes really good at a short sprint, get sure. them really yeah. good. Yeah. And it's, it's people go, oh, sprints. It's like, no, proper sprinting, max effort sprinting. I'm not talking about shuttle runs or fast running. I'm talking about five, 10, 15 meters max. Fast acceleration and fast speed work will make your athletes hugely robust and it'll just transfer over. Even if you work with general population, teach them how to run. Yeah. Think about the mechanics of sprinting. They will get good results. They will be strong off the back of it, and they'll get some really, really good body composition yeah. off the back of it as yeah, well. Yeah, they will. You know, you never look that's, at a, that's a sprinter. A good point. Do you you no. never look at a sprinter and go, oh, terrible body shape. No, do you? no. Do you know? So it, I think that's, that's a really, that's, really good point. Mm. It's it's such an underrated exercise, isn't yeah. it? Just sprinting fast, mm. and the you know it works every muscle group. If if you, if you get in there, it works. Mm. Tree, literally top to toe yeah, toenails yeah. to fingernails as Kelvin says yeah and um, it's it sort of unleashes something as well and mm. there? there's a there's a there's a hormonal effect yeah. I think of sprinting that you don't get a lot of the time because you know even, even when you're in the gym you're doing power work say you're doing max effort lifts or ballistic type lifts you're still leaving something in the tank mm. because there is still a technical element to mm. that Whereas in sprinting, of course there's technique, but you are just going a hundred percent forwards as fast as you possibly can, and it's there's there's an, an element of that that most people never do that. Yeah. They do not tap into those fast twitch fibers that, mm -hmm. that only get elicited at, with with maximal intent. Yeah, and so sprinting has got to have its place, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. For, for anyone, really. Yeah, yeah. And, but if you look at it, even from if you want to go into like exercise physiology we're not going to go into it massively now but if you look at what happens is the studies show 5 10 15 meter sprints or max effort sprinting higher levels of eccentric strength no other exercise comes close to eliciting the amount of motor unit recruitment um, and like i say from your shoulders from toenails to fingernails as, as you've mm. just said it's just a great exercise and it's well warranted to have it in mm. do you know yeah so I think if you've got a part, if you've got partners, the drags, those are really, really good. If you want to get your athlete strong under a, a lower or a lower velocity based movement, if you haven't got access to them, get your people sprinting five, ten, yeah. fifteen, yeah. twenty meter sprints. Those short sprints, you will get fantastic gains off them. Mm. But make sure you have the rest in there. I think that's where people go wrong with them. Yeah. They say, "Oh, sprint," so you'll have like twenty seconds rest. It's like, no. Just yeah. give them the respect they deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't go 95% on a back squat, give somebody 30 seconds rest and mm. then go again. Mm. It's, mm. it's the same thing. So they're my two there that I would mm. go into. That's some good. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a bit more boring there. And um, I think I think the first one would be push-ups and all their different variations. Mm. Single arm, you know, alternate staggered positions, eccentrics, rotations, partner stuff mm. I think the other one would be single leg work and you know if you've got a park bench or if you've got an elevated platform you can do rear foot elevated mm. you can do pistol based mm. squats on that platform you don't need a platform but it, it, it can introduce a little bit more variety so yeah they're two important planes like if you if you built a program around press ups mm. and single leg work you're not going to go far wrong when it comes to strength mm. training basically and all round body robustness. The third one, I'll put the old scarecrow in there. You know that one where you go partner and it, there's one person out like a scarecrow mm. and then the other person has to climb around the partner without mm. touching the floor. Yeah. If you've got a gym, a class based training and they're not too worried about close contact, 
it's such an engaging exercise that yeah. it's bloody hard work yeah, yeah. really really hard work for both parties mm. but the core stability the mobility work the strength mm. required mm. you're puffing and panting by the end of it no doubt about it and yeah. it's a good little finisher for the group isn't it yeah yeah I think one that sticks in with that is they're not too confident like, even just trying to rip a ball on yeah, each yeah, other that's do with one, the rugby yeah. boys and yeah. stuff like because you've got the guys just hanging on for dear life yeah. and then you've got the other person just yeah. trying to get over yeah. and ripping that ball off and you, and you can manipulate the position so you can have it close you can take it far away depending on how there's you want a, to challenge there's a lot that. of drills and partner stuff in that combat performance training for yeah. sport yeah. Uh, video of mine which has got that one in it's got, yeah. it's got one called the fort and mm. um, there's a few other sort of martial art based drills yeah. one leg sort of hopping around and pulling and pushing each yeah. other yeah you can build a program on this stuff no doubt absolutely and guys if you do want to sort of if you sign to think I, I need some more ideas in terms of programming for body weight training and whatever because obviously we've got Black Friday coming up I would just check out the ultimate CPD collection because if you grab hold of that resource you will be covered on you will have a just a, a trying to figure the right word there's loads of ideas on your programming the, the way you're going to structure the exercises using body weight making sure that the warm-ups are really creative warm-ups of just jogging around the pitch and stuff because yeah. a lot of the stuff for myself when you're working with teams your warm-up is your session yeah you know yeah. you have 20 yeah. minutes 15 yeah. minutes with you the guys if you're lucky you know so actually that strength work and the stuff we've just been chatting about that goes seamlessly into the warm up and everything, and you get that in warm ups revamped. Yeah, yeah. Um, body weight solutions, right here, right now, everything's in there, guys. So if you are interested, it's, a good, it's a good option. It's a really, really good option. recommend checking out the ultimate CBD collection because there's no stone unturned there. You will become a better coach by no. having those resources. So really do check that out. So hopefully that's give you some ideas on the training, body weight training, the ideas and stuff. If you want any more, ask some questions below, guys. Let us know your favorite body weight exercise. It'd be really good to see that. Um, drop them in the comment section and we'll uh, we'll have a little bit of a discussion about that as well. So we're gonna sort of change tact away from the training one. And we've got a fantastic uh, question from Ray Simpson. So big shout out Ray, being on a lot of our programs. Absolute diamond bloke, brilliant bloke. Um, we've got a lot of time for Ray and I, the, I love this question because it's one that comes up quite a bit and a lot of people find themselves in this situation. So Ray asked the question is, if you were to move town or move to a different area and you had to start again, you had to leave your gym, boot camps, fitness business, job, whatever it may be, and you only had £500 to start with, some people start with less, some people might start with more, what would you do? Yeah, it's a really, really good question because I think a lot of people do get overwhelmed if an opportunity comes, partner gets a job somewhere else, and they move to different towns or yeah. leave a business or whatever it may be. It's like, where do I start? So, cheers for that question, Ray. It it's actually, a question. it actually made us think a little bit. It was like, ah, that's there's a lot into that. So let's let's kind of unpack that one, mate. So yeah, yeah. That's a good where, where, where would you start, mate? If you had to start yeah. again. Yeah. Moved to a different part of the world, sure. and you had yeah. no email list, no, none. Of, what? Yeah. Where, where would you start, mate? Where would you start? Well, the 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 one thing that no one can take away from you is your skill set, mm. and um, wherever you are on that spectrum, you know it, it can't be kind of you can't overstate that enough. Mm. Nobody can take that skill set, and the beauty of our industry and what we do is that you don't need a lot of money mm -hmm. to an extent you don't even need the 500 quid really mm. if you can get a place to train and you can get yourself in shape you don't need any money to open up a social media account yeah. anybody can start a group the first thing I'd probably do thinking out loud if I moved to a new town would I, I would start a, a Facebook group or a group in general in that like a Facebook group leads mm. leads strength training leads whatever mm. and um, start to invite people into that from the local area I would be making myself known in every gym 
in every community in the area straight mm. away. I'd go and do training sessions here, training sessions there. And the reason I do that is one, to meet people, but also two, to think, where is right for me? Mm. What does, what does, what's the right fit? Do I want to be in the spit and sawdust weightlifting gym? Do I want to be in the bells and whistles health club mm. or somewhere in between? Yeah. But more importantly, just meeting people. And then I'd get on the internet and I'd find out when every single sports team, club, training group that I was interested in working with, triathlon, cycling, tennis, boxing, martial arts, whatever, mm. when are they training and how can I go down and meet yeah. the coaches? And you don't need any money for that. Mm. And I would just hammer that, mm. hammer that yeah. for the first 30, 60, 90 days. And then I'd build my database yeah. back from that. So at the end of that, I'm gonna have hundreds of names of people and I'd probably put some kind of event on mm. at the end of that free event, you know, turn up in a coffee shop, a little meet up, mm. strength training group, whatever it may be, get half a dozen or a dozen people together. And that's my gut feel where I'd go with it and give value through the Facebook group at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I've got to, got to, yeah, I completely agree with everything there. I think um, somebody on the elite coach mentorship now, what, I've got to drop his name, Keith, Keith Ewing came across. He was starting a fresh, completely different industry, and now he's literally gone in the space of six months from zero to to forty uh, k a year. Mm. You know, done no yeah, Facebook done ads, none done of amazing. that, and literally he just tacked that offline. He made the connections. He made a heat map in his local area. Where does this people train? Where do these people train? These are the people that I want to target. He made that. He invited him for sessions, ran a few like consultations. Oh, we could do this, we could do that, and he's just built his business. And now he's he's booked to the level that he wants to work with. Doesn't want to do loads of hours each week, and um, and he's absolutely smashing it. So yeah. offline for me is the biggest one. And then if you are looking for, that's in the short term, right? Start putting the effort in. It, people aren't just going to come to you and say, "Oh, you're a PT. I'm going to come work with you." You, you have to do the work so you, you've got to get into that mindset of going right I need to speak to as many people as I possibly can and then with that little bit of cash that you've got I would look at put some um, sign up to a subscription for an email marketing place just so all of these contacts you've got you build that mailing yeah, list and put them in one place you know and a lot of there's, there's ones out there for nine ninety nine a month there's yeah. some that are yeah. £199 a month but go for the lower one that's going to give you scale and grow I think yeah. that's yeah. a smart investment for me and then if you're looking to think about right I want to drive people to it then I would look at getting a landing page built so you might look at lead pages or you know get response so, so there's loads out there creating a landing page you don't need to spend massive amounts of money on it that's just somewhere where you can drive people that are going to get people to yeah. the email list. And I would literally just make the commitment and say, 90 days, I am going to go all out and reach out to these clubs, put the sessions on. It's as simple as that. If you mm. tell somebody from a local running club, hey, I'd love to do a, a running, runner strength uh, workshop for, for you guys, for your members, completely free, just come down, they'll snap it up. I think I I did yeah. it once. Yeah. It's like twenty five people in the room. It's twenty five people that I was able to educate and also yeah. Yeah. try and sell onto a I program. Think, I think the, you know there's a lot of value in being the connector hmm. in a community, and you don't have to be the expert to be the connector. You, you, you can be, but there's a lot of value of bringing people together into groups hmm. so they have a good time. And um, so wherever you are, I talk about you still got your skill set, but even if you're not even qualified yet, you can still be the connector in your area. And when you qualify, you're in a fantastic position to take advantage of that. And it will serve you well. Those those contacts you make early on in a in your time frame, whether you move to a, a new town or whether it's just early on in your career they will be the contacts you won't realize this all the time but they'll be the contacts that are still there in 10 years 15 mm. years and 20 years and it's amazing how that continues it's happened with me in many many times i still get business I still get referrals from people that i met 
15 years ago when I first started out coaching and I didn't really know what I was doing that mm. much. So, you know, don't underestimate the power of the first few years or few months of that effort that we're referring to here. Absolutely. And I think that the biggest thing with that is understand that it is difficult. You are going to put yourself out there. We're not going to, everything we've just said is, is simple to do, but sometimes you can get in your own way. So if you are one of these people that you identify yourself as getting in your own way, then I would make sure that you have somebody in your corner who can hold you accountable for definitely, that. Definitely. Okay, so I mean, with that in mind, yes, it's a shameless plug, but I don't mind because it's a product that we, we truly that we believe, believe in. in. Yeah. You know, Works. Um, so obviously we just talked, we mentioned Keith earlier, he's gone from zero, he's trending on for 50K a year, he's at 40K a year now, he's trending on for 50 because he's just going to fill up his last few sessions. He joined the Elite Coach Mentorship. And he's gone from that. Okay, there's, there's not, you could drop him a message and he, I mean, he'd be more than happy to speak about that. If you're not ready for a 12 month program, we do have the accelerated mentorship program. Okay, so this is 90 days working with the SE team to make sure that we are sprinting this 90 days of getting you from where you are now to where, like one step closer to where you want to be. So if you have started somewhere new, or if you're starting, for, if you're feeling like you're stuck or you're at a standing start, get us in your corner, okay? Because we will get you the results. We've got hundreds and hundreds and th thousands of students now who are achieving great things through our programs. And one of the most recent ones that we're really excited by is our mentorship programs, okay? So if you are feeling like you want somebody to push you, to help you get to that 50K a year completely offline, this is no, there's no BS here. I'll stand by that claim because I see it happen time and time again. Then reach out, you know, Black Friday is coming if you want to take advantage of that. We even have the option of sign up on the Black Friday, you don't need to start until January, so if you're worrying about starting a programme like this before the year, but you want to take advantage of the Black Friday offering, reach out, we're more than happy to help. So yeah. that's that's how we would start if we moved to a brand new place and we needed to build a business up quick and rapid. Yeah, it's a good question that, that's a good one from Ray, Yeah, classic, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the key here is just reach out and have conversations because... Mm -hmm. You know, and do that to us as well. If you think we can help you, let us know, and we're happy to jump on a call and um, see if we can. You know, ultimately, we, we always want to provide value, and it's coaching that's the key here. Mm. It's coaching you so you can see where you need to go. So um, you know, we've got a fantastic team of, of coaches that will do just that for you. Yeah. So give us a shout. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So two great questions there. Hopefully, you took a lot from that. I enjoyed digging it's into those. Session. You know, yeah. really, really good. Guys, if you've got any questions at all about the Black Friday, um, about what we've discussed, share your comments. How would you start, if you had to start again and you only had £500 or less to get started, how would you go about it? Would you do the same as what we do or do something different? And then also share your body weight solution. What would you do for your body weight training? How do you get the most out of a program? Okay, so we're going to wrap it up, guys. But thanks again for ch uh, tuning in, and we'll catch you again very, very soon. Have a good good one. see ya. Cheers. Bye bye.